What was your reaction to these comments from Jay Powell? And how do you think it's going to impact markets more broadly? Yeah, well, if you listen to his comments uh, during his last speech, it was pretty clear that they weren't going to move off rate hikes anytime soon, even though there was a lot of wishful thinking on behalf of people like me, other investors. I think this was a good dose of reality. It happened just as people are returning from vacation, getting kids back into school. Investors are paying attention again, and I'm not surprised by how much the market was down. I think look, the forward trajectory here doesn't look great. Um, and there's some interesting things when you look at the overall public market versus the private markets. You predicted there would be millions of layoffs in tech specifically the last time we spoke. That was just a couple of months ago. What do you think now? I did. So that was back in May. I also, at, our, at that time, our estimation was the market was going to pull back. I think the layoffs have just begun. Um, it's happening across almost everyone's portfolio and probably 80 to 90 percent of their companies. And what's interesting is even though the overall markets are down more than 20 percent, particularly on the growth side, growth tech stocks are down much more than 20 percent. What we're hearing from the bigger consultants, meaning the allocators of capital to investors, the Q2 numbers are going to come in down four to six percent. So what does that mean? That means that investors, GPs haven't taken their medicine and there is going to be more pain in our market. And that pain is in the form of layoffs. It's going to be in the form of something like 20 percent of all venture back companies going out of business. 20% of venture back companies aren't going to survive this? Absolutely. I mean, look, we saw this in 2000, 2001, 2002. And what happens when the market pulls back, investors start taking their time to invest. We're more patient with capital. LPs uh, pull back as well. And there's just less capital to go around. We're seeing it also less company creation. So the pace of company creation last year was much faster than this year. And what you're going to have to do as an investor is rationalize your companies. Um, and every investor is going through that right now. So hang on. Are you saying you think this is going to be as bad as the dot-com bust? I don't. That's a question, Emily. That's a question. I think this could, if this is a prolonged period, what, what's really painful for tech investors and growth investors generally is prolonged market malaise, prolonged volatility, because it's a lot easier to come in and invest behind a market that's a little bit more stable or a market that where you know interest rates are continue to go down when they're going up like this this hasn't happened in a long time and i think when the pace slows you have to rationalize where you put your capital so if this lasts for two or three years you could see more than 20 percent of the companies go out of business if it lasts for a year or two the market could rebound much faster and again you know this is tied into what powell did today with regards to inflation growth stocks are very very sensitive to interest rates and interest rates at three percent is one thing going to 5-6% is going to be another. And that's what we're waiting for, because we can't invest in these valuations if rates are going much higher. So are you estimating a 1-2 or a three-year downturn? And how is that impacting your investment strategy? Yeah, right now we're, we're expecting um, a two to three-year malaise. So meaning our companies need to have capital for at least two and a half to three years minimum. What is that? Like, what companies are we looking at? Two types. So one is these companies being created in this environment, and this happened back in 2000, better DNA, very strong culture around uh, protecting capital, and they're just growing up in a different way. Those companies are rising from the ashes of this mess. They're going to be very strong. We're very interested in the earlier stage. You also have companies at the much later stage, meaning they've got hundred, hundreds of millions of revenue. And what's happened is a lot of the late stage investors have actually pulled out of the market. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But because they're not there, other investors now can step in at reasonable valuation. So it's really a barbell. Some of these very large companies with proven business models, high gross profit, they're going to do great. Um, two of our companies, Salonis and Tridge, just raised capital. And then these earlier stage businesses that are coming out, rising out of the ashes are probably going to do really well. They're going to prove their business model. They're going to prove their unit economics. And that's when people like me come in and put capital onto supercharged growth. So there are opportunities, but there will be pain. Let's talk a little bit more about that pain. What does that mean from a, a labor market perspective? I mean, there's been some really interesting swings in the labor market. You know, you're saying layoffs while we've got unemployment at historic lows. Yeah, the, the data is really hard to wrap our head around because it's not what we're seeing in the market generally. So I, you know, I can't vouch for the, the government data, but we will see layoffs in tech. And there's some interesting things um, that are happening when you start laying people off. You know, we're seeing salaries 
and just general um, inflation around the cost of hiring really good people starting to slow a little bit. This is typically what you would see in a down market, but it's not being reflected in the data. The interesting thing is the co our companies with B2B exposure are doing very well. Some of them have re-accelerated growth. Our companies with more B2C exposure on the commerce side are, are having a harder time. And this is more recent. And this could be because you know, inflation is really affecting people's pocketbooks. But when you look at this, this is why this market's so difficult to, to parse is that there are companies performing really well that right now we see it more on the B2B side than the B2C side.